Yeah, we went up to the second floor and the stairwell changed on us. So, I don't know. But you tell me. When I was a little girl, I lost my mom to stage four cancer. It was those five days after her death where I'd have my first ever paranormal experiences. Little did I know, it was just the beginning of what would become my haunted life. During my journey to become an Emerson College student and ultimately work in the entertainment industry, I was first a student at Bunker Hill Community College. During this time, I met a lot of like-minded people who were into the arts. Use the denigrate of selves and others, but ask why. Positive statements place your face into the sky. So until we break the cycle, how we ever gonna fly? And together, we would collaborate on various projects. There is one project in particular that I was in the midst of researching at that time. A film about Fernald State School. The Fernald School and others like it were part of a popular American movement in the early 20th century. It was called the eugenics movement. The idea was to separate people considered to be genetically inferior from the rest of society to prevent them from reproducing. We thought for a long time that we belonged there, that we were not part of this species. We thought we were some kind of, you know, people that wasn't supposed to be born. About 36 children slept in each room with the beds jammed together. The children received little education and less affection. They had what they call Red Cherry Day, okay? What Red Cherry Day was, they'd sit us all in a circle. You'd get up in front of all these kids and you'd pull down your pants and you'd pull down your underpants. They'd make you turn around and they'd whack your ass with this branch until it was red like a cherry. The uh, nation was shocked to learn that the federal government sponsored radiation experiments on human subjects without their consent. In Senate hearings in 1994, it came out that scientists from MIT had been giving radioactive oatmeal to the boys, men now, in a nutrition study for Quaker Oats. We were never told anything. All they knew is that they'd been asked to join a science club. You are 63 years old. 63, yeah. You have never received from the state of Massachusetts or from any agency at all a statement saying that you are not feeble-minded, that they made a mistake. Absolutely not. I was a mix of appalled and captivated. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a documentary style film or more American Horror Story. Nonetheless, I wanted to show the grounds and what remained of Fernald to my collaborative partner at the time, Arthur. Hey everyone, I'm Arthur, and um, I was the other half of Sarah's journey to the Fernald State School in the summer of 2012. It was the perfect sunny day, the temperature was not too hot and not too cold, and we jammed along to great music on the way over to the location. The road that we were turning onto to eventually turn to the main buildings at the front of the compound um, felt much more like country road at the time, which is really weird because looking at Google Maps now, it really wasn't that far from civilization, but it definitely seemed like we were um, in the middle of nowhere at the, at the moment. I remember you parked over near this tree um, kind of in the clearing uh and i remember just getting that sense of like ominous energy throughout the entire time that i was there we roamed around the campus-sized property and adventured through several different of its abandoned buildings though all the buildings were filled with this heavy feeling there was one building in particular that would really end up messing with us. It started out innocently. We wandered the floors and wound up in a room that held several dummy torsos and prosthetics. I'd imagine that some of that might have been made to help teach CPR. 
I don't know. But I remember getting this pit in my stomach and I couldn't shake the image of a dead body. Unfortunately, this would end up being a premonition. We continued exploring that building and we walked up a flight of stairs to the next floor. It was up there that off of the main hallway there was a room with an old piano and Arthur started to just play around on it. Of course it sounded ominous because it was out of tune. And in that moment, it was almost like the sound of the piano brought the place to life. We both just felt like we were in this trance and we suddenly looked up at each other and we shambled out of the room at the same time, disoriented. And we're back in the main hallway, looking around in disbelief because the floor plan had seemingly changed. And so had come up pretty um, big stairs to get to the second floor. Um, we came out of that room. They weren't where they were before. And what I mean by that is the stairwell um, was not in the location where it had been. And we circled around the second floor and tried to open these doors to the different rooms. And it literally was like we had gotten locked out in this corridor that um, we didn't know how to get out of. I know this sounds crazy, but we went up and down this hallway, could not find the stairs we came up on. Uh, there wasn't an exit. We started to panic. Suddenly, in a place that we had checked multiple times before, there was an exit and it was a stairwell. It was not the stairwell that we had used previously to access that floor to begin with. We got out as quick as we could, ran to the car and just took off and didn't look back. We didn't get far down the road before we hit a bunch of traffic. And I remember looking out, just thinking like, oh, what's the hold up? And there laid a dead body, partially covered next to a motorcycle with pieces of this person spread about the traffic circle. I don't think we said a word the entire drive back. I never even, I think that was the first time I ever saw an accident like that. And the timing, I remember we, we couldn't shake how surreal that was to be so close to this kind of, um, you know, supernatural energy or energy where some type of imprint has been left and then to, you know, see that something tragic like that had happened um, was part of our trip. It definitely just, uh, it left an impression on me. And, you know, once home, I looked through the few cell phone photos that I took and there happened to be one that for some reason a shadow entered. I don't think either of us will ever forget that day.